here at Short Circuit, we're all about giving you the premium tech tips. So if you ever wanted to know how to waste $160,000, Here's the Mercedes EQS. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mercedes Canada, I wouldn't be that mean. I think I just lied though. Uh, the front. A lot of people in our office have said different things about it, ranging from uh, it looks like a bean, it looks like a Camry, uh, it looks like a shoe that's been squashed. I personally think it looks like an eighth gen Civic that will not believe the average income in Canada is $55,000. <laughs> The questionable looking design is for a reason though. The drag coefficient of this thing is 0.2, which is just flat out incredible. It is tied for the best drag coefficient of any production car with the Lucid Air. It also really helps out the range. The range of this thing's over 500 kilometers. Moving around to the side, we have some aero wheels and for aero wheels, I do think these look fantastic. Also right here is your windshield washer fluid reservoir, which means they won't let you access the hood, excellent. We get to do this again. In the owner's manual, if you search hood, it's absolutely hilarious. Only qualified specialist workshops may open it and their reasons, they have five of them. Risk of accident while driving, risk of injury while opening the hood, risk of injury due to overheated vehicle. We also have risk of injury due to moving parts. And apparently you can injure yourself with the windshield wipers while the hood is open. Let's open the hood. So to unlock the hood, you can see this little flap which exposes uh, the hood latch. Pull that and we should be in. Okay, can we just, oh, there we go. Now you can just open it. Jeez, don't wanna play with that too much. Big risk of injury in here. In here, there isn't a whole lot going on. Our strut towers, we have a HEPA filter in here and a bunch of plastic. I guess that's so if you hit a person on the road, they don't die. It's just dumb that you can't do it. Oh, it's getting half heavy. Let's put it back down. Around back, we have what's probably the best angle of this car. I really like the light bar. And the logo is also your trunk latch. Love it. Best feature on a Golf, best feature here too. Getting in the back, um, if you're a mob boss, it's not great. Like there's loads of room here, but like you'll have to really chop up your subjects because it kind of comes down and would hit pretty easily. Also like it's just completely white. The other journalists that had it are probably animals and that's why it's so dirty already. But like, yeah. For charging, you plug in right here. It can do up to 200 kilowatt charging, which does 10 to 80% in I think 37 minutes. That's just because it has so much capacity. 107 kilowatt hours is just a ridiculous amount of battery. It's also a ridiculous amount of weight. The six 5,800 pounds. More on that later though. To get in, we have these fancy illuminated handles that pop out as you approach. They actually work really well. Sitting in the back, we have our first critical flaw. Leg room, excellent. But I'm six feet tall and my head's against the top. If we roll over, I die. In a luxury sedan like this, where you would kind of be expected that half the time you're being driven around, unless you're Linus Sebastian, it's going to be real big problems sitting back here. How is this acceptable? If you are under 5'8", though, these seats are very comfortable. We've got a nice little, you know, couple. Oh, there's no couple. Where are the cup holders? There must be cup holders. I haven't sat back here yet. Is it jammed? Am I just dumb? There, what? Is it a phone spot? No, there has to be cup holders in here. Oh, there we go. It was just jammed. Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess that doesn't work the best, but you do get two cup holders once it comes out. In the fancier version though, there's a tablet here. It's a Tab S4 if you want um, something that's way slower than your phone. Oh, there's also seat heating and cooling and stuff. Getting into the driver's seat, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. The stuff like the leather on the steering wheel, all of the bits that you touch, they feel just incredible. The quality and craftsmanship is top notch. There's lots of other things though that just don't quite live up. Like the capacitive touch buttons here, the entire thing moves around when you press something in a way that just feels really, really bad. Same with like the steering wheel. All of the controls are capacitive touch. Do you know why you put capacitive touch buttons on a steering wheel? Because you're Volkswagen and you're really fucking cheap. This is the sort of stuff that you put in a car for cutting cost or because you're Mercedes and you want to copy Volkswagen's worst idea. Well, since Dieselgate. <laughs> you get used to it, even though you do kind of need to look every time that you hit it. That said, just give me proper controls, Mercedes. There's no excuse. For the seat controls, it's still a mixed bag. The controls for reclining and height and stuff are pretty good. Whereas for seat heating, cooling and memory, it's all one big capacitive touch button and it feels terrible. <laughs> 
Also incredibly annoying for the seats, you don't have lumbar or bolster control from the side. So instead you have to go home, comfort, seat, lumbar, and now I'm able to adjust it and the bolster and stuff. It's just, why? <laughs> In other Mercedes cars, they have just like a little control over here. That would be so much better, please. Just bring that back. Overall though, once you have your seat settings locked in, these are exceptionally comfortable seats and they also have massage function, which I have brought an expert in for. Wow, fancy car. Oh yeah, it's so fancy. So as a resident massage seat expert. Oh yeah, of course, I can judge that. So which one do you want? We have so many different programs. Wait, what? They have so many <laughs> options? Yeah. They have hot relax, relaxing back, hot relaxing shoulders. Let's do... Mo mobile, mobile mobilizing. I don't know what that means, but let's try it. It's not very intense, to be honest. I don't really feel it. Well, maybe let's go something harder. Activating massage. Like I think one thing is like maybe it's because it's a pillow, so my back is not really leaning on the. the back. I have to push back a lot more to feel it. Okay. Well, what about a deep wave? Yeah, let's go. Let's go deep. Just a second. There are things that like poke your bum. <laughs> Let's do the deep workout. Is this deep enough for you? It's not, because things, I don't feel the balls. I, I, I want to feel the <laughs> balls and like, I, oh, I can feel it's like a tiny bit like a touch. I usually, when I have a massage at home, I want to feel a little bit of pain. <laughs> I think this would be nice, like when you're having a nap while you're driving. But if you're, if you're looking for some kind of massage that can actually make you feel like, oh, that was so nice. This is not the massage you want. This one I find so weird. Press bottom. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I feel this one more. <laughs> Where's the ball? Oh, oh, do you give it a 10? For a car? I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Okay. That's just nice to have. One kind of funny thing that it does, you can't see it in person, but on the camera you can. It has facial recognition up here with IR. So if you like block it with the steering wheel and drive around for a bit, a thing comes up and it's like, raise your steering wheel so you can see the whole gauge cluster. Cool, I guess. One thing that annoys me about the gauge cluster is that the color of your gauge cluster and the LEDs of the car cannot be separated. You adjust one, you adjust the other. So I end up having this one all the time because it makes the gauge cluster a lot easier to look at, even though it's kind of the most boring LED setup. I want the rainbow. One thing that I really want to shout out to them though, the navigation, if you open it up here, you have the option to have a 2D map that always faces north. I always like my maps to face north. Oh, one more thing. There's also a bunch of fancy heads up display stuff. Um, I, I disabled all of it because I found it distracting. I'd say let's drive it, but you guys know I'm a filthy liar. This is actually a sponsor read for iFixit. Thanks to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. iFixit makes compact toolkits with all your essential bits you need to fix your electronics. From mini kits with 16 bits to full repair toolkits to start your repair business, iFixit has got you covered. Use iFixit's over 70,000 repair manuals featuring photos and detailed instructions to get into your electronics, and you can even use them to try and get into the hood of your Mercedes EQS. Work worry-free knowing you've got quality parts backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Fix your stuff today and learn more in the link in the description. Now let's actually drive it. <laughs> oh heck yeah this thing has a zero to 60 of 4.3 seconds incredible what over 600 foot pounds of torque can do to move over 5800 pounds of metal and batteries once you do the launch the rest of the driving experience is not the best. The way that they have the suspension set up is very comfort orientated. You have two settings for your dampers. They call it comfort and sport, but it's more like wallowy and comfort. For going under about 80 kilometers per hour, the comfort setting's pretty good. Once you're on the high wheel, you'll want to put it in sport. Otherwise it kind of dips and dives a little bit too much for my liking. Although going forward is pretty good, slowing down is just the worst thing that I've ever felt in a car that's not completely clapped. I feel like first 50% of the brake pedal is like regen braking or something like that. I am more confident braking in my minivan than this thing. They're doing some adaptive stuff where it's seeing what's in front of you and changing the brake regen and the pedal feel. To bring this to a stop in a way that's nice and controlled and smooth is 
almost impossible in a lot of situations. You just have to be constantly fighting their adaptive braking, which you can't turn off, and getting a nice stop is so hard. This is coming from someone that does throttle blips and heel toe in their daily driver. It's genuinely incredible how badly they f it up. Oh, let's just, oh, geez. It doesn't really love getting chucked into corners. You can feel the whole thing sort of bending around, but this isn't supposed to be a corner carver. And I think that the way that they've set it up is perfectly fine. Like this is quite a bumpy road and we're just cruising over everything. It is incredibly smooth in here. Top marks for that. Also sound isolation, very good. It is raining outside, actually pouring right now, but for just like going to and from work, it is quite fantastic. The lane centering in this is excellent. It's not quite as good as the BMW iX that I had last week, but if I didn't have them back to back, I am sure that I would have just said that they're the same. Now, let's see, we're coming up here. Okay, this is, oh, stop, 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 stop. That was a little bit scary. Uh. <laughs> Overall though, if you're not approaching a stopped vehicle from 80 kilometers per hour, the adaptive cruise in this is just top notch. Not quite as good as Audi's system, but still very good. One thing I have heard other reviewers complain about is the feel of the steering. So we have 10 degrees of rear wheel steering in this, which gives you a really nice and tight turning radius. It seems like as long as a tiny truck, but a double lane, you can do a U even with no problem. Great. For the first couple days, I found it a little bit strange because below 60 kilometers per hour, it's turning with the front wheels. Above that, it's turning kind of against them. After a couple days, I figured it out and I don't really have any complaints. I think they tuned it pretty well. Right, the hey Mercedes thing. Hey Mercedes, do you cook rice? <laughs> Showing six results matching Mercedes Benz with more than three stars. If you're Uncle Roger or me, Please you know, who has a little bit of, of accent, then this may not be a good option. Maybe Alex, you should try it. Directions to Solly's Bagelry. Where do you want to go? Oh, oh my God. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? I want to go home. Oh, why, gods? <laughs> what was that? The sound system we have in here is from Burmester and it is freaking great. Now, one interesting thing they've done is the tweeters are aimed at the windows instead of at you. Now this does make the highs a little bit less crisp, but it makes the sound stage so much wider. Combined with the 3D processing that they have in here, it just sounds so huge, like you're in a room twice as big as this. Overall, these speakers are just fantastic. The lack of sub bass does take it away from being like an experience like it was in the Volvo, but overall it's great. My only little nitpick also is that the sound dipping is not tuned quite correctly for this car. It must have been done in gasoline vehicles and when it translates into here, sometimes when you pull up to a light the audio just dips way too much and it's kind of weird sounding. Overall like I didn't hate my time with the EQS. It is in many ways quite a good car, but it's just death by a thousand cuts. The crappy capacitive touch, the menus that take way too long to go through, incredibly bad brake feel, kind of strange looks. One or two of those I can get over. In a car that costs $160,000 Canadian, it's just not acceptable. Like you can get away with one or two of those things, all of it together just, leads me to being like, why? Why would you ever buy this? There's so many other things that you could purchase for this amount of money. What would you take? This or a Golf GTI, a minivan, a Tesla Model 3, and an 86? Those four, those four, <laughs> those four, for sure, 100%. You can get the low-end S-Class for this amount of money, and, oh, Andy, do you think that is better? I don't actually know. Mercedes Canada, just, just give us an S-Class, you know? I wanna be a fancy boy for a week. In the end, it's not worth $160,000 Canadian. Were any of you guys even gonna buy this anyway? Like how many oligarchs and oil barons that want an electric vehicle do we have in here? I don't know. Comment down below if you are one and just have a fantastic day. See you later.